Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mars Lombardi, and um, I am a community coalition patient expert, but uh, I am also a disability justice activist and advocate, and uh, very clearly, I am a patient. Um, I am going to talk to you today about adaptive aids and devices to help with symptoms. I do not have any disclosures. So adaptive aids and devices are really just meant to make life easier and more accessible for those of us with chronic illnesses and or disabilities. And we're going to talk about a bunch of these. So household adaptations, daily use and work items, mobility aids, braces and supports, and sleep comfort are the things that I'll cover today. But there's so much more that goes into this. For household adaptations, we're really talking about general changes to the household that can help with symptoms and improve safety. These look like a lot of different things. Some things are very simple, like step stools, shower chairs, shower heads with a hose, um, doorknob adapters, railings and grab bars. But this also encompasses very large changes to the architecture of a house when somebody becomes a wheelchair user or are um, no longer able to climb steps. So these can have huge financial implications for patients and their families. When looking at daily work, uh, daily use and work items, these are devices that can be used every day around the house just to make things easier. Um, and this is also really great for those of us who are still working, uh, whether that's from home or in a workplace environment. And I've kind of just put a bunch up here. Um, some of these are really interesting, like a 360 toothbrush, which I didn't even know about. Um, and I'll show you a picture on the next page. Uh, but others are really common and easy things to implement, um, like writing utensil grips, adaptive eating utensils, um, and then a couple of things that I have implemented in my home workspace are height adjustable desk or workstation and a laptop stand and keyboard, because I don't have a monitor. So either my neck is at the wrong height or my shoulders are at the wrong height. And um, there are easy ways that we can go about dealing with this. So here are some pictures. Um, I want to draw your attention first to uh, the picture with the turquoise jar opener and hands. This is something that's very inexpensive, and it's so handy, um, no pun intended. Uh, basically, the idea here is that instead of using the little muscles in your fingers and in your hands that may be very stiff, swollen, painful, and just not as strong, you're capitalizing on your bigger muscles um, in order to do these basic things like opening up a jar. And it may seem like a very simple thing, but having an adaptive aid like this gives somebody a piece of independence back that they may not otherwise have. Um, next to that is the electric version of a jar opener. Um, and next to that is the 360 toothbrush that I was talking about. And this is something I never really thought about because um, I just brush my teeth every day and I, I don't know, I just deal with it. Um, but it was actually something I found from another um, patient with EDS, and it's something that you can, instead of having to do this brushing motion, um, which for some people may be very difficult, depending on um, what joints are bothering them, this is something that you just place in your mouth, and it vibrates um, and kind of does this brushing maneuver uh, around your entire mouth, um, which is kind of, it's like a, almost like a retainer. Um, so a couple of other things, uh, you can see the um, right in the center, um, there are these foam uh, tubes, and they can be placed around things like a paintbrush, a fork, um, a shaving razor, um, a pen, and they're very inexpensive, but they make a huge difference in, again, using larger muscle groups as opposed to smaller muscle groups. Um, and then I've included some other pictures of things like straws. Um, there are, there's a lot in terms of um, environmentalism and getting rid of straws. 
And um, there's a lot of discussion in the disability community about how straws are an accessibility issue because um, sometimes we're just not able to pick up a glass and sip without a straw. So having reusable straws, even having travel straws, like the one on the uh, far right um, that comes in a little container and is folded up, can be really helpful and make a huge difference for people. So mobility aids is something I think we're um, very familiar with in general. These are just things that make activities more accessible for individuals, and they don't have to be used all the time. That's the key. We're talking about dynamic disability when we're talking about Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders. So anything from canes, forearm crutches, rollators, wheelchairs, service animals, um, these are all a part of mobility aids. And you may see somebody one day using a cane, and the next day they might be using a rollator or a wheelchair. And the next day they might be using nothing. Um, and this is a really tricky part of being a patient with a dynamic disability because um, the social implications, the judgment that surrounds these kinds of um, very visible um, aspects of your persona are very hard um, because people are often questioned. Um, there's a lot of like, well, you know, if you, if you don't need it today, why did you need it yesterday? Um, a, a great lack of understanding. So I think it's just important to really focus on the word dynamic because dynamic means that it's not going to be the same every day. So here is just a picture. Um, I wanted to just kind of display some of these things. Um, not even all canes are the same. Um, there are so many different ways that you can um, adapt aids to make them easier, whether it's for your, your grip um, or for balance, um, like the quad cane. Um, using uh, Smart Crutch is um, a company that makes uh, crutches that you use um, on your forearms instead of your hand. Uh, and I also wanted to bring up service animals. Um, we've talked a lot about mental health today, and um, service animals are animals that are trained for specific tasks, and they're very important. Um, and emotional support and therapy animals um, can be very helpful for mental health, um, as well as physical health, even if they're not necessarily a trained service animal. So I just want to draw attention to that. Then we have braces and supports, which are going to provide support. They will, uh, in some cases, restrict joint movement and often reduce pain for patients. And these are, there are a variety of things. Soft braces, which um, are less restrictive. Rigid braces, which are going to be more restrictive. Um, there is uh, something called the body braid, which is a copyrighted device that is really um, less of, well, there's a picture of me wearing one. Um, it's really less of a brace and more of a sensory feedback support system so that when you're moving, um, because we have poor proprioception most of the time, um, we don't always understand the range of motion of our joints. And so it's very easy to make a movement and then unintentionally uh, hyperextend a joint. And so this provides some um, sensory feedback to help mitigate those kinds of issues. Um, there's also finger and thumb splints. Um, I'm wearing some today. Um, and they can really help with the smaller joints. Compression garments, um, kinesiology tape, uh, as you, if you can tolerate adhesives. And um, I don't really go anywhere without a travel neck pillow. So here are just some pictures of a variety of braces. And then sleep comfort. And this is something I think is really important because many of us just don't sleep well. Um, these are modifications that will hopefully improve rest because rest is important for healing and rest is important for treating pain and other symptoms. Um, again, this is an area where um, there's a lot of expenses, um, mobility aids, I would say, and sleep comfort. There's a lot of expenses because uh, specialized bed frames may not be covered by insurance. Um, the 
Things like wheelchairs, um, rollators, oftentimes you need a prescription from a physician. Then you need to go through an insurance process. These things really should be fitted to um, a person's independent body. Uh, so it's definitely an accessibility issue because I'm presenting all of these different things, um, but we don't necessarily have access to all of them depending on our financial security. Uh, so these are just a couple of um, the types of pillows that you can get. Um, and finally, I just want to talk about the fact that we are all unique. We don't all have the same constellation of symptoms. We don't all have the same um, patterns of pain. And um, you really need to just do what feels right for your body. And we all deserve to feel as good as we possibly can. Why we're here today is to establish how we can make doing this more accessible and more equitable for our entire population. So I thank all of the representatives from the FDA for attending. I thank all of the patients who have come and uh, told various aspects of their stories and all of the clinicians who have um, enlightened us with more information. And I thank you for your attention.